But no, it was something. That's how I know it was a great appearance because it's like it's so. There's no middle of the road reaction to this. It's either people hate Artie for uh, taking a sh on stage, or they thought it was the greatest thing they ever saw. On TV. All right, Jim, go ahead, and then we do really have to listen to the appearance. Okay, um, I agree with the previous uh, caller about Joe Buck being like stiff as a board when he was trying to deliver a, a co comedic line. Uh, the only time he seemed comfortable was when he had a pre-scripted, you know, sports question to ask, and. Uh, and the last comment was when he was thanking his panel. Uh, he said, I want to thank all the guys, and even the one that ended my show on the first night, <laughs> referring to Artie. All but right. I thought Artie okay. It was the only part of it. I fell asleep like, halfway through, woke up, <laughs> and felt like it was, uh, you know. Brand like new show. Right. Brand new yep. show. All right. Well, yep. i got to be honest with you. I don't know Joe Buck from Joe Schmuck. I just know him from announcing some sports. Yeah. He, he does. Stuff. Listen, his, yeah, he father does was, play, his father right? was a legendary sports announcer. What was his name? Jack Buck. Jack Buck. And I love the guy. Right. And I, as a matter of fact, I would do a bit sometimes where Jack Buck, while announcing a baseball, and I did this last night. Well, why don't we hear the bit? Okay. I'm All sorry. right. Let's All hear right. it. Let's right. hear it. And Joe Buck went in his father's footsteps, and Joe Buck is an excellent Excellent play-by-play -play guy, and he does the world series. Well, what we'll do is we'll listen, we'll listen to Artie's appearance on Joe Buck Show. Is that what it's called, the Joe Buck Show? Joe Buck Live, and it was live. It was live. There was no editing. It was live. <laughs> Very dangerous, but all right. It sounds like that's why the show is live. Hey, you want they things brought to Artie on to mix it up. And Ross well, Greenberg, you motherfucker, you came up to me, and you said, if Paul and Jason get boring, you go nuts. That's what I did, so go fuck yourself. I don't care how important you are in this business. I really don't give a I, I, I really do. I listen to one person, and that's the great Howard Stern, not you, asswipe. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> All right, listen. Let's take a break. I'm good. I'm going to go, go to the vending machine. Go, go to the vending machine. What are you going to get? <laughs> number 46. What that's is number 46? I don't even 46? know what it is anymore because I'm skinny. Just <laughs> get number 46. That'll calm you down. You need you need. Candy. Listen, man. Listen, it got a, uh, for the people. Listen to the crowd. Michael Irvin. We're going to hear we're it. We're going to hear it. But, but uh, the visual. Michael Irvin, who's a Dallas cowboy. Now, when you say you listen to Howard Stern, you mean Howard K. Stern? Or no, no. <laughs> well, him too. But he He's listening to the guy <laughs> he tells, up I on know, charges. I know he ain't listening to me. He tells me All to right. do some fucking, you know, crazy <laughs> Get that Howard K. Stern. Yeah, he's yeah. nuts. Yeah. All right, look, let's take look a break. Look at what happened to Anna. Don't I say it on the show, Howard. I go, I go Howard ain't a pussy, and I'm not either, so I'm going to say what I want. Here's our agenda when we get back, so you know what's going on. We'll play the show, all right? Uh -huh. We'll listen to Artie's show from Joe Buck. Sounds like we're in for some lively... And then we can have this all over again. We can, we can have can lively talk. debate. Yeah, we can talk about what we think. That's right. Yeah. And Ross then, Greenberg. And then with any luck, we can leave. <laughs> I uh, love it. That's a great idea. Uh, uh, we also have to hear from Lisa G., who's been oh, following yeah. some very big stories in the Howard 100 News. Let's room. do that first when we get back. And Bang My Daddy is coming up also. I guess we've got the whole show planned out. That's right. There's a lot. And then <laughs> while we're going to be in the break, Artie will be at the vending machine calming himself down with <laughs> various treats. I just uh, hope those treats fall out yeah. because Artie will be killing the machine if they don't. Artie loves the vending machine. Cookies, candy, and cupcakes filled with cream. I just learned that number 46 is actual heroin. Now, I got, I also got texts from two million comedians saying that's the greatest thing they ever saw. We're going to need that and, when we go to court. And I, and I would never say that unless someone is, the, you know, what the f*** are f***ing with me here, man? Are you going to the cool vending machine? The number 46 is heroin. Oh, it is? Yes. I thought number 46 was assholes and Joe Buck was in there. Well, we'll find Let me it. ask you something, because Artie makes a point. You know, a lot of times guys kill and they do something incredible. You know, like the time that Gilbert was on that award show. And notice we've never seen Gilbert on another award show. <laughs> yeah. you know, is that the kind of killing it No was? Joe Buck, no Conan. <laughs> I, would work, I would work construction before I conform to Joe Buck. For, I, I, I really would. All right, let's take a break and find out. All right, one question before you go to break. Yeah. The, the, the Arsenio Hall show, do you consider that that, that was a, a major plus in your career? I you think so. What? I never evaluated it. It uh, was, Howard. Did. You know why? I just you're, did it. You're putting it on a scale, though. It's like it, good appearance, not a good appearance. Uh, it wasn't a good appearance. Howard, let me tell you something. Yeah. In my opinion, it wasn't a good appearance. For a guy like I, I me, it was. I'm For talking about I, I've done better. Yeah, yeah you I'm have. But I'm not, the, I'm not comparing it with Artie. I haven't heard Artie. But in Artie's, the context but, of the times, nobody did what you did. In that moment, and it had everybody talking, so right. I would consider that a plus. And I'm a Howard disciple, and I'll tell you what, 
when you did, when you said to Arsenio Hall, did your mother name you in a fire right. because of our arson? And he goes, don't talk about my mother. And they threw you out of there. <laughs> Me and all my buddies were like f***ing rock and roll, man. That's why we love you. And and look, I'm not as good as you, but I try to be, and that's what I tried to be last well, All right. All right. Let us le listen. We'll get to listen. We'll get right. to listen. <laughs> I'm anxious to hear. I'm a little amped up. I'm anxious to learn and hear. Ah. Uh, you won't learn anything. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, let, what is this, Chris? What is your opinion? What is your opinion? Oh. Quickly, come on. I, I saw the performance. It wasn't very good. I had to turn it off. He's bringing the show down. For but a while. That, it sounds wait like a minute, the show wait a minute. You mean outside of this, Artie is bringing the show down? Yes, but this, this, this adds to it. I'm trying to convince my educated friends that the Howard Stern show is more than this crass humor. You've got this underlying wit about you that Artie's kind of destroying my friends listen and they hear stuff like that and they're like this is this is fitting our stereotype tell okay. your educated friends to go f themselves <laughs> I, go. I will already yeah. all right thank go. you chris candace what did you think hello yes candace <laughs> yes tell that last guy if he has to convince his friends anything about your show they're not his friends number one that was such a snooze fest Artie came on, he, Paul Rudd, everybody was so quiet, and, and this stupid bitch, you always say about st stupid bitch Jay Leno did, and then Artie came out and he fucking ruled. The place was on fire. All right. Joe Buck amazing. was trying to do bits? Oh, oh. Joe Buck was doing bits. It was oh pathetic, goodness. Robin. He interviewed Brett Favre. I'm a huge fan, and Brett right. Favre is a great quarterback. There's controversy about him now. Is he going to come to the NFL? Favre's a great quarterback, but he's not George Carlin. Right. And Joe Buck ain't Letterman or Howard. So it was like ambient. Ooh. And look, I, I, I don't know. I, I thought I was helping him out. God forbid any, anyone should ask a controversial question. Right. All God right. forbid Very you good. don't do anything but be safe. It's like Dave's apology. A no-go. Already ruled. All right. Very good, Candace. I'll listen to this when I get back. Thank you. Once again, those of us who haven't heard will get a chance. That's right. I'm so worried you guys are going to hate it. <laughs> We're going to walk out. All right. We'll uh, be back right here. Yeah. Rock me, baby. All right. We're going to get Lisa G in here, give you some Howard 100 news. Then we'll listen to Artie on the Joe Buck Show, which is very controversial. And then we're going to get to Bang My Dad. The They're still arguing about Artie in the hall. It's just uh, hysterical. I love so it. He has his fans and his detractors. Even in the hall. A lot of fans out there, though, right? A lot of fans. A lot of fans. <laughs> All right, Lisa G, what do uh, you know about what's going on in the world of the Howard Stern Show? What do you have for us? Please. Speak a up. lot of stuff. You know, uh, Robin was nominated for PETA's Sexiest Vegetarian. That is correct. Well, and I she, wasn't? Well, she lost, but she came in the top five. All right. Who are the Kelly top five? Kelly Pickler won. Ugh, I Being really resent that. Yes, but there's more to the story. I don't know who that is, Kelly Pickler. They would like Robin to pose in an ad, a campaign for vegetarianism, right. uh, to make a dress entirely out of lettuce. Now, she should do it. Yeah, but if I didn't win, why isn't Kelly Pickler in the lettuce? They couldn't get her. She won. <laughs> and then you can put on big. then you can put on some dressing. <laughs> well, this comes directly from PETA as mm -hmm. opposed to voting. So Cloris Leachman has posed in the dress made out of lettuce before. Lettuce there it before is. there it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so is Alyssa Milano. Yeah. So Robin, you're gonna do it. I might. I might consider that. Yeah, I'm going to talk to some people about that. My advisors. I think it'll be highly controversial, like Artie's Joe Buck appearance. <laughs> Just uh, for the people listening out there, uh, Lisa said we have uh, Cloris Leachman in the dress and Alyssa Milano. The only picture we had was Leachman. I know. Alyssa yeah. Milano's isn't around, apparently. Yeah, that would have been nice. But uh, all right, uh, what else is going on, Lisa? All right, it's been two years since <clears throat> Robin started her diet of detoxing colonics and juicing. And Robin tells me she loves her current eating habits and yes. is interested in teaching seminars possibly to help others. Quote, I'm all about changing the health of America, making people understand they can take an active role in their own health. Plus, Robin may be gaining another convert, as comedian Thea Vidal will apparently be going on the program after she comes off the road. She's on tour. Will Thea be staying at your estate? And, uh, no, Thea will be staying at her home. Will she be enemying with you and souping no, with you? No, she will be doing that on her own. Right. <laughs> All right, because I know sometimes when you take a new convert under your wing... 
Like yeah, Tim. but she's all the way on the West Coast. Uh, I'm I not see. Going to, uh, you won't be flying her flying in? Flying there, or she's not going to be flying here. That She wants to be home to do that. I wonder if it'll be easy for you to help her with the, the distance away. I know as you, as you continue to help people, it's very good when they're right in, in view of you. Really? Yes. <laughs> I want to thank uh, well, Robin. You well, have to give Thea a very powerful enema. <laughs> I want to Very thank Robin powerful. for helping me lose weight because nothing is going to make me stop eating like the thought of a Thea Fidel enema. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Lisa G? Yes, Richard Christie adding another acting credit to his resume over the weekend. They're he shot building. a scene wow. in a new independent feature produced by Maria Menounos called Serial Buddies. Oh. Maria oh apparently God. is a huge fan of the show and emailed yes, Richard is. to say she has a role in mind for him. He plays a skinhead. And he actually shaved his head for the part. What is the over-under? I, mean, I passed by Richard's uh, studio. I saw his head was shaved. He told me he was just doing it because it feels good. He didn't tell me he's in a movie. No, he's in a movie. He's uh, shaving right. for a role. Yeah, uh, I didn't realize that was a role. <laughs> Thank God. I thought he was playing Curly. I got fat for a role, Howard. Yeah, but good. Yeah, Listen, you know, uh, what's the over-under on uh, Thea Vidal's hold? <laughs> in other words... H what? what? Old. Her hold. Her hold. In other words, how long do you think she'll be able to hold her animal Oh, water? my God. Input. You're so silly. Refresh our memory, Robin. You're considered that one of the is, top that holders. That is a colonic uh, situation. Oh, colonic. You're, you're, that's a fill you're talking Sorry. about. Sorry. So, you know, refresh, it's not the hold. It's the fill. Refresh the audience's memory, if you don't mind. With you, the colonic, with the not colonic. the anima. You are so terrific at holding, and, and, it's, and even no, Dr. Ronnie. at being filled. At being filled. And Dr. <laughs> Ronnie even praised you. Because you don't understand, the colonic, the water is continually running. Yes. So no, it's not like an enema. So the fill is when they clip off the tube, and how long can you take that constant flow of water before they have to <laughs> unclip the tube and let it flow And again? remind people, because you're a pro at this, how long <laughs> do you, how many, how many minutes yeah, do you have? My fills go? are different all the time. But, but what is your longest fill? I don't know, Howard. There's never a clock running. How long can your anus hold <laughs> that water? Anus is not the issue. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? The rectum. It's the colon. The colon. How much? How long can you hold? Sophia and other people know what they should aspire to. Again, it's the wrong term. It's the fill, the not fill. the hold. Okay, I'm learning. <laughs> how long a fill? Please uh, tell people. Oh, Brag I don't a little, know. if you will. Maybe sixty seconds. Wow. It's like riding a bucking bronco. <laughs> so you can you can hold well, that's a, fill. They only ask you, ask you to do that for eight. Eight seconds. <laughs> do, are they, now, when the general idea is eight seconds, and they get someone like you no, in there. No, no, no. Bucking bronco, Howard. Oh, now, how long is the general <laughs> fill, though? I don't know. Everybody's different. I'm not in other people's colonic. But why do they praise you so much? So it must be an inordinate amount of time that you are able to fill. <laughs> Uh, you must be way head and, uh, head and shoulders above everyone else. <laughs> I am not. Head and, who knows? I'm I'm a piker compared to the people who are giving these things. I see. So who knows what they do? Maybe they're still walking around with water. I mean, Robin, and I, don't, I know she doesn't like to brag, but she received such praise from these colonic people about her fill. And that's not, you know, typical. I don't think they give false praise. I don't think they're just blowing smoke and water up her ass. <laughs> so, uh, good for you. Along with the water. Isn't it ounces? Smoke. Like, how many ounces is she holding? Is that what you mean? I don't know. I don't know what he means. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I don't, we don't know what anybody means. All right, what else do you have, Lisa? <laughs> All Jean? right, don't forget Father's Day is around the corner, and it's not too late to give your dad the gift of Sirius XM Radio. Go to Sirius.com or XMRadio.com for details. You say the pros are the people who give the colonics. Sure, what is their range? Their so I don't know. I uh, never ask. Are they in, like, the two- or three-minute range? I haven't a clue. Don't, aren't you curious? I No, I am not. You're right. the one who's curious about everything back there. All right, let's get down to uh, thank I you, Lisa too. G. All right. Oh, everyone's curious. All right, let's get to uh, Artie on Joe Buck. It's causing a lot of controversy. We just read in USA Today that Artie crossed the line on Joe Buck Live, that Joe Buck's producer, this Greenberg character, and Joe Buck are upset. Artie says they shouldn't be upset because his bits kill.
He was he the, saved show. the show. He saved the I'm show. I'm not Fred saying I agrees. was the show, but I, I'm just saying. It sounds like you no, are, and why no, not? Me, Fred I, says I, I, you I, were. I, I want to make a correction. He did not save the show because I don't think that's the show that they wanted, but it was entertaining <laughs> as fucking hell. Oh, okay. And they enough. should be sending him a scotch. Uh, Let me a say case one of thing. This morning is no, please, no scotch. The yes. one thing Water. that's bad about this <laughs> yes. is that the bad things that were said in print. Yes. Because as much as we carry on about this here, it's all in the air and it goes away. Ah. But that printed article will stay there, and that's not that's nice. Right. I that's don't care. Not I don't. Ca I don't care, Robin. I I'd rather good. be. Right. I'd rather be an outlaw than a fucking pussy. I really would. I'm I really just saying, would. you know, for they asked you to be a guest on their show. It was wrong for them to do that article. Hey, you're right. right about that. Absolutely, you're right. You're that's right. right. All right, here we go. Let's sit, listen, and evaluate. That's fun. That's fun for you. <laughs> you can sit there and listen. But how, I, 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 huh? if, if I just want you to play it from the beginning of the segment where he starts talking to Paul Rudd. I'm going to run the whole thing. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. I'll start with you, Rudd. All right. I got on TMZ, my favorite website, right. and saw one of those ambush camera crews following you through some airport at some point in this country, at some point in your life asking you ridiculous questions, poking the bear, just trying to make you make a mistake, right. and you didn't take the bait. Uh, well, I just, yeah, I just wanted to get out of there as fast as I could. But, They're but they LAX. linger. They just, they, they hang out there, yeah. But they linger, and they want you to say something that they can then spin and turn around and blow up and, and get after TMZ website. Right. You know, it's, it's tricky. You just, you know, you can't, you just have to be on your guard. I guess. Here's a guy who's not on his guard. No, he's like much more entertaining on those. Uh, well, no, yeah. those There's sites. no guard there. Joe, TMZ is your favorite website? <laughs> I, I thought, uh, what's your s***ing <laughs> cock dot com? <laughs> Give it up! Give it up! Yeah! I'm on TMZ constantly. <laughs> Did you see what Angelina was wearing today? What oh. the fuck? How about going to a sports website, for Christ's sake? <laughs> Jason, would you like to follow that? <laughs> uh, nah. Okay. By the way, I'm a, I'm a Giant fan, so I hate the Cowboys. Michael, don't kick my ass, but I hate the Cowboys. <laughs> By the way, you owe me money. I lost a lot of fucking money on you, motherfucker. <laughs> There's a guy in Staten Island named Bobo who you owe money to. <laughs> but uh, as a Yankee fan and a, and a well and a Giant fan and a well-known homophobic, clearly, <laughs> I'm also a well-known homophobic. I, it's it's like a it's like a white trash gift from God that the f Cowboys have a quarterback whose last name rhymes with homo. <laughs> Say that shit, Angel Dust. I know I've tried, like Tony Homo, <laughs> and he's dating a fat chick. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Simpson started out looking like Jessica Simpson. Now she looks like Chris Farley from those Gap sketches. <laughs> Kim, fuck cowboys. Jason. <laughs> Jason, when we talk about fame and we talk about being plucked out of Good nowhere, segue. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm telling You're you, you talk, about, Costas, you really. talk about scrambling for a segue. I just pulled a hamstring <laughs> looking for some sort of segue. I'll be pulling a hamstring later to fucking. You know. Thank you. Thank you for that. I want to be working construction by next Thursday, so I hate show business. You're on your way. You, you, uh, you know, so are you. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, you know the show's on HBO, right? <laughs> That's right. No one's watching. <laughs> what about you and the fishbowl? Have you had to deal with anything after coming out of nowhere and being on SNL all of a sudden? Uh, nothing, nothing horrible. Uh, no, no, uh, no scuttlebutt to speak of as of now. Mostly, I got to worry about my mom googling me uh, <laughs> at this point, and then having having to come up. You know, with with answers for that. Artie went through therapy uh, from his mom googling him. Well, uh, first of all, I hate when Jason's mom googles me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, there's 80 websites predicting my death in a week. That's well, fun. Artie Lang's gonna die. Dot com. But you know, Joe, it's exciting for me to be here, not because of you, but right. um, Thank you. because I loved your father. 
and and I love you too. You're the best. He's great at what he does, Joe Buck. Yeah, thank, I, I, you. I, indeed. thank you. Indeed. But Joe's father was a hero of mine. He was. He used to do games for the Cardinals. He was an announcer, and he he was one of the last real men's men. He wasn't politically correct, like a pussy. You know. I mean, and you follow him now. Like I'm on a Howard Stern show. Howard's not a pussy man. Howard says what he feels. And uh, clearly, so do I. But um, I don't have as much money. Uh, but um, Jack Buck was your father. Correct. And uh, <laughs> it wasn't like a lot of people think Louis Armstrong. It was your father. Jack Buck was your father. True. Um, is this gonna is this gonna take a while? Yeah. This is, uh... Yeah. Sorry to ruin your f***ing great show. Yeah. Um, no, uh, no. So, I, so no, I, I'll I'll I appreciate the apology because you have. I'll tell it. <laughs> I'll tell it quick. Um, so Jack Buck is doing the 1990 National League Championship Series on CBS, and he wanted to talk about baseball. He was an old baseball guy. And CBS would make him do shitty promos for CBS movies of the week right. <laughs> in the middle of a play. And he didn't know what it was. And like he didn't know what the movie was or the name of the actress is. But he was so brilliant at being a great announcer that he would use whatever the promo was to segue into the next play. So he would say stuff like... Um, uh, there's a fly ball of Bonds. He's there. He's got it. That's the way this one starts. And by the way, tonight on CBS, uh, Meredith Baxter Bierney stars as a <laughs> battered woman uh, in a, something called uh, uh, I Want My Kids Back, the Jessica Connor story, uh, starring Meredith Barney Baxter. Uh, she's a battered woman. Speaking of batters, here's Barry Larkin. God, Paul. Paul, can I talk to you, please? I like Jack. I liked your dad. I, I still remember hearing the story when when some kids were asked, you know, they want to get in the business. What do you have any advice that you could give us? And uh, Jack's advice was start smoking. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to take that right now. Uh, you can't do that, sir. <laughs> sir, you cannot do that. I'm not. I'm, gonna, I'm like Beretta. Okay. I'm, I'm going to kill my In wife. In jail? Oh, you were about to light a cigarette, I guess. Yeah, I took out a cigarette. I'm assuming, yeah. Good. <laughs> Great. Uh, I, won't, I won't light it. Okay. No, I, do you think I care about you smoking a cigarette after what you just laid Fuck out it, here? Let's do it, brother. <laughs> no, don't. Please. Say what you mean, Joe. Sure, right, we got an sorry. hour. Um, we will continue this with HBO Online, I think, unless yep. they pull us, uh, they pull the plug on it. Uh, seriously, we, we, I, I want to ask you about, you're, you're, I've known you since we were 18. Yeah. You've not yeah. changed one bit. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, or you. Really? I, well, I'm going to look at you. <laughs> thank you. Aww. Is there a picture of us, I think? <laughs> I don't know. Do they have a picture oh, yeah. of us? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> there it is. There we are. Look at that. There's Paul Rudd on the far left. His hair neatly My tucked hair. into wow. a ponytail. Yeah. Me there's with you, hair. Do you still have those pleated acid wash jeans? <laughs> yes. They're in the dressing room. There's Paul, and that's mm -hmm. Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh... And Preston, who did the music, and David Garvin. He was kind of like the kind of like, he, he was a little bit like the uh, Kristen Davis one. <laughs> All right, I love you. I, uh, it's time now. They're going to hang out. We've got one more segment left in I the gotta show. Go, Joe. I gotta Let's be up go. At Goodbye. Days. It's called "I Refuse to Hyperventilate." Just a few thoughts from me. Well, there you go. Yeah. So that was the whole appearance. That was it? They didn't come back. That was it. No, that, 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 no. that was the whole thing. And then well, there's they, no commercials, right? Right. Then yeah. we did something on the Internet they showed a bit. Okay. How'd that go? Well, I shut up finally, and though Jason, Paul, and, and Joe Buck went to the same high school together, and they talked about it for five minutes, and Howard, it was like you could hear a pin drop. Right. So, and I just shut up. Hmm. Well, I would say that was entertaining, wouldn't you? I would say that, yeah, whenever Artie spoke, it got a little more entertaining than it was before. Yeah. And like Ralph it said... It was death every time they right. you were not talking. Well, here's what here's the problem. And like Ralph said, there was a lot of collective groans. It, Howard, it got so many laughs and cheers every time I spoke. Here's the problem. Here's the way I see it. This is why it's controversial. I said offensive stuff, I know. I know. You, you there said was a offensive lot of stuff. cursing. Yeah. There was a lot of cursing. It's HBO, there's cursing in a Chris Rock special. But you know what, Artie?
party, you know, it's it's you know, you could use a mallet or a sledgehammer. And I and I always use a sledgehammer. No, he went with TNT. <laughs> so because I was told to, I swear to you. They said use any language. He you said want. when they get, of course. Right. They said it's HBO, and they said when it gets boring. Ross what, Greenberg said when it gets boring, do something. Here's I why it's to controversial. Not, not because of the cursing. That didn't. Uh, I, I think that was fine. It's HBO. The gay said. stuff. But the HB, yeah. But the HBO, no. The HBO stuff, uh, you know, like when you watch a comedy special, it's very raunchy. Right. right. This guy Joe Buck, I don't know him, but he seems to be a fairly straight kind of guy. Right. So it was probably jarring juxtaposed with his straightness. Maybe that's, that's what I mean okay. about it. Right. Maybe now, it's jarring. Now, where you're going to get controversy is, and you know, I'm trying to think why the hubbub. Why did I get so many emails? You got a panel of people there. And on the panel, you know, you, as a comedian, you got to make a decision. Am I going to be a team player and sort of work with these guys or am I going to do my thing? I think it would have been d for you to do their, do their thing. If right. you got caught up in that rhythm, I don't there think. There was none, yeah. I don't think. I mean, the show yeah. sounds d Deadly. Well, and, not only that, it's yeah. like, I mean, already pointed out uh, something very important, but it's like they, they were buddies of his from like high school where he grew up. It's like. Why is Artie sitting on that couch? Just get all your, your silly buddies on, Howard, on the couch with you. It should have been about comedians and saying funny things. Howard, they showed a picture of Paul Rudd and this guy when they were in high school. Who gives a f***? What, would you want me to come in here and show pictures of me in high school? Well, so, let me tell so, you what I also don't give a f*** about. I don't give a f*** how they're dealing with celebrity and TMZ. Yeah, and Joe Buck, and by the way, when I looked at Michael Irvin and said, there's a guy in Staten Island named Bobo, you owe money, he fell over laughing. Mm -hmm. And so did the whole fucking audience. And, and and listen, I'm being real, because that is real. I do owe a guy in Staten Island. Can, can I make a suggestion? Because J.D. and a couple of the guys out there were suggesting that you might want to play at least a little bit of the follow-up show, because J.D. came to my office and he goes, Artie thought he was quiet during that segment, but it's... The, no, 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 I wasn't quiet. For a little while, I got right. quiet, and, and I let them talk about high school. Let me hear. We'd like to welcome uh, all of you on Overtime on uh, HBO.com as we continue our discussion. We've got the comedians on the stage. We've got uh, Michael right down there. Michael Irvin is still with us, kind enough to stick around. And uh, anything else you'd like to get off your chest, Artie? Uh, you bastard. Yeah, the jizz. <laughs> the jizz you shot on it. <laughs> Can he be removed? Is that it's possible? It's the internet. I can't. What the f***? There's coyotes f***ing 18-year-old girls on the internet. Oh, God. It is true. Nothing says jizz like the internet. I Can I smoke on the internet? No. You can't do anything. Right. I'm trying to save miles. I'm trying to get the kayak. <laughs> Jason, if you were me, how would you rescue your career at this point? Um, yeah, it's really, it's, I'd let him smoke. <laughs> you want to see how to smoke a cigarette, still look cool, but avoid lung cancer? That is impressive. That is impressive. I think it's in chin number four. You need to. Here we go. Buckle in. No, number four, the show you won't get to. You're right. <laughs> You're out of your league, Buck. Just I know. play by play. I know. <laughs> Believe me. It was, uh, it was right after this segment started that I realized that. Uh, you were funny with Favre. <laughs> I like you think you were quiet during this segment. No, no, but wait, when I get quiet, I get quiet, and and because uh, it's going at me too, Howard. Yes, I'm mixing absolutely. up with him. Yeah, no, listen, he's clearly caught up in this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, but let, you gotta let, just let it play till they talk about high school. Okay. Why are you giggling at me? You suck. I'm in the middle. Do something. I, I'm literally in the middle, and I'm. I just. I, I feel like uh, like heat. And then cold, and it's combusted. It's to be in the midst of your own weather system. I was right telling now. Paul this I, backstage, like and yes. I don't know why I know this, but when three gay guys are having a threesome, the guy in the middle is called the Lucky Pierre. <laughs> and I said, well, I just thought of my new email name. I, I'm I'm running the camera. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you are, and he's uh, lucky yeah, Pierre. Exactly. Really, you don't Dude, know. I'm from Jersey. Hey. Watch what the f is that. All right. All right. Have you, have you eaten at Lucky Pierre's? It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 really, it's an incredible. It's in, what is? I think it's on West Fourth. Michael, can you great, see me? Can you see me melting up here right now? Michael, don't get. 
He's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Jason. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, we just did this live. Yeah, yeah. You happens. do your show live, right? I mean, I, is that a yeah. commonly it's asked? It's called Saturday Night I know it is. <laughs> I know it is jerk off. I know what it's called. <laughs> jerk off. Yeah. Like. Here's jerk off. That's the way this one starts. Right. You're, you're going to pull me into a dark place in about one more minute, oh, and it's not going to be good. Let's do it, brother. Let's make some news, man. Yeah, no, it's true. Pull me into a dark place. If and I'm going to do again. it, I'm going to do it with you know an A-list guy. <laughs> Where are you going to find an A-list guy? You're going to hang out by Letterman? <laughs> <laughs> you can't get I, one on here, brother. <laughs> Woody, are you... Want to uh, do the Joe Buck show? No, i got to change my sock drawer. <laughs> are you, like, uh, getting a pap smear, or what do you got? Put your feet down, for God's sake. Yeah, listen, I'm trying to get comfortable. Somebody should look natural on this show. <laughs> I, I don't... Where... Uh, where is what is like going a roast. on? It's turned into like a roast. Hey, where's, where's Jeffrey wait a minute, Ross? Wait a minute, there's roast. <laughs> now, uh, are you glad you stopped filming and flew to New York for this, Paul? I was here. Oh. <laughs> but I wouldn't like literally the in the neighborhood. Paul Rudd is an A-lister. He happened to be outside. <laughs> uh, Thank you for saying that. You it's, not true. it's not true at all. Hey, this guy's in a lot of big movies, man. Uh, uh, but not uh, me and Jason. Well, oh. No, no, but at least I've got a shot still. <laughs> I'll be making 80 grand a week at a theater this weekend, and you'll be making $11 an hour on SNL next fall. The, do you have to get all the way out of Howard's butt to go to the gig, or does he come with you? <laughs> Let me tell you something. You should go up Howard's butt. It's a good career move, bro. All right. And there's more room than in Lorne Michaels. I, I recognize the name, but I don't know the face. <laughs> You hey, about Joe? I'll tell you something. I wouldn't mind being a lucky Pierre between those titans <laughs> of entertainment. Hey, here's some this is inane great, conversation. Man. This is all. This is awesome. Really? I'm so glad you were the last segment, so we can continue. Dude, this my is the misery. last segment ever. So I know. <laughs> you two went to high school together. No, I'm not pointing at you. I didn't go to high school. <laughs> we. <laughs> We uh, we went to the same high went school, to not same. not together. Yeah, a little dif uh, difference. But wow. We, yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> wow. When you do that, it's uh, there's a ripple effect. That's nice. I know my fourth chin is making a joke. I'm like you. <laughs> Jason God. and I are both from Kansas City, and yeah. uh, <laughs> the funny thing about Kansas City, here we if go. You go back in its history. <laughs> You big Royals fans? Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a yeah. <laughs> Royals fan. I'm a Royals but fan. But you're a Steeler fan. I was a Steeler fan growing up. Big, huge Steeler fan growing up. Still like the Steelers. I like I root for the Chiefs. Uh, kind of from around high school, but during like those 70s, uh, the 70s era Steelers. All about the Steelers. You a Kansas City guy through? I think the problem with the show is that it's just a, it's a tough show. It's I don't a, know what the show is supposed to be about. Right. Yeah. So Artie's on there doing his thing, right. and it's funny, and it's working, and I think it's saving the right. show. I don't know. Uh, Howard, it, listen, it was total, let, I'm telling you, it's a total, to me like it is. total bore fest. Just let them, yeah. let another 10, let another 20 seconds go by with the high school. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, but I mostly follow Kansas basketball. Uh, uh, KU basketball. Is my did, you, did you go to KU? Did you go to? I went to the basketball camp in sixth grade. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Did you meet Larry, Danny Manning? Was he there? Larry Brown. Danny Manning was not there. He was probably on his way to get drafted by the Clippers at that point, or, or probably was something with uh, his knee, maybe. But I met Larry Brown. Um, he shook my hand very quickly, then moved on to shake some other kid's hand for more money. <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> Thank you. Uh, but, yeah, no, it was a good camp. It was a good camp. It was, it was, it was a fun time. I remember in Lawrence, our high school, I remember when West played Lawrence High and Danny Manning was playing for Lawrence High School and everyone went and it was amazing because he could dunk. Yeah. You didn't see that too much in a high school. You didn't see that much in Overland Park, Kansas, yeah. no. Michael, I know you got a microphone out there. Uh, is there Thank anything? God. Is there anything you could do? Yeah, please, tell us your thoughts. Just, it's just refreshing to see white on white crime. <laughs> oh.
Except it's just refreshing to see white on white, white, white crime. crime. Great line. Yeah. Great line. Great line. Yeah. line. Urban was always funny. <laughs> he said it's refreshing to see white on white crime. <laughs> That's good. That you should, should be my book comment. beat the shit out of me. <laughs> that, that's our last comment of the night. Wow. Jason, Artie, Paul. Wow. That's it. Crowd, thank you. We're uh, signing off. The show would sound like, like a door fest. Not a moment too soon. Until you said something. Yeah. Howard, would you say I made that show interesting? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I would say so. You know what it is, though? He wants it to be a different kind of show, whatever that is. And uh, it was like mixing apples and oranges. But why ask me to do it? Why ask me to that, do it? That's the mystery. He's a fan of the show, Howard. He listens every day. He's got my... St this ain't going to happen anymore. But he said to me, he goes, I I've seen Beer League. Uh, it's the Whiskey Talking. I listen to the Stern Show. I read your book cover to cover. Over. He goes, anytime you want to sit in the booth for a Yankee game, let me know. I guess that's not going to happen now. But, I mean, that's the kind of fan he was. He asked, I did what he asked me to do. Joe said he was in the uh, green room with uh, Buck's wife during the show. Ooh. Oh. Buck's wife. Is that your right, Joe? Yeah, we were. Uh, I was uh, staying back in the green room watching it on the monitor. And, you know, she was, she was very cordial. She was laughing when, you know, Audie dropped that, uh, that blowjob joke bomb. She just, you know, she laughed at it. And right as he says it, Joe Buck's two young daughters walk in the room. Oh! And, you know, like, <laughs> like, they didn't hear him say it, but you could see, like, everybody's face was nervous. Like, oh, my God, oh, you know, I hope he doesn't continue in this direction. But, like, as Audie kept continuing to steal the show. I don't know if she was nervous that her husband was going to become unemployed and already get the show, or, uh, you know, if they were nervous what he was going to say next, but yeah. you know, he definitely he definitely gave the show a direction. You yeah, know, no, the show kind of was kind of... It was just rudderless. It was rudderless, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Dan, go ahead. Uh, Dan, you're on the air. Go ahead. Now's your chance before we get to Bang My Dad, the big highlight of this morning's show. Uh, Dan? No, uh, Dan, let's go to Chris. Chris. Hey, hey Howard, you know, I, I watch HBO and I see Joe Buck's promos out there on ESPN. He's trying to go for an edgy thing with his commercials, trying to be that tough guy. You know, but who else wants to listen to, who wants to listen to a bunch of jocks sitting around? We can watch ESPN if we want to watch that. And Joe Buck, you know, he's kind of condescending towards Artie when he's a fan. Isn't that what he wants? He knows Artie's deal. That's I just the don't point. Understand. I mean, if he wants to have a different type of show, then you, you have to book people who are going to sit there and talk about their high school. Not only that, Howard. I mean, wow. it's like, it, yeah. it wasn't even, I don't think hey, he was so even clear Howard. in his mind if he was turned off to Artie or not. Because if he was turned off to Artie, he would have either asked him to leave for that after show or just not addressed him at all. First thing he right. does is shoot, you know, take a shot at Artie's bow when they come back to that after show. I don't think he would have came back. In I don't it. think he would have left Artie on the show if he didn't want, if right. he didn't enjoy Artie's appearance. So right, that's why. Weird. What's in the paper? I hate to react. What's in the paper? Maybe he's being sarcastic. Maybe he did like it. He was very friendly to me afterwards. Said thank you. I mean, people were hugging me, thanking me. Like they were. Paul, well, Rudd, Paul Rudd said to me, "That's the greatest thing I've ever seen." And Paul Rudd is the nicest guy. And so, the, the Jason Sedaris is from SNL said the same thing. Everybody was hugging me. You know, well, Artie gave them something to do. Yeah, Artie, who was the guy that had the Lucky Pierre line where he said, "I'd be the Lucky Pierre in between these two guys." Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. So I there he goes. He clearly that. got it. Yeah. Now, Paul Rudd is a smart, is, funny guy. My point is, what's in the paper is what's going to live out there. For Listen, Rudd. you know what, Robin? I That's don't care. True. I really don't care. I just I don't care. I understand. I'm just saying, you know, these things have a way of coming back again and again and again and again. Mike, me, you're me, on the air. Let's hear from Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Howard, I'm going to tell you why this was such a great appearance. Is because Joe Buck tries to give off like, I'm Mr. Professional, you know, I'm so scripted, and, and tries to be his dad. But Artie definitely took him out of his element, and it was f***ing funny. He I mean, changed the agenda of the show, funny. which threw Joe Buck. Exactly, exactly. Right. And it was hilarious. Artie, but hilarious. what is that show supposed to be about? I don't know. I mean, I've it, never seen the show. It's the first show, so it, I'm not sure they know what it's about. Or if it, you know what it sounds like to me? The show is about guys sitting around talking sports. And it's, it's supposed to make um, sports and entertainment are mixed I, now. That's what I think the show right. is supposed I, I to I can be. tell you exactly what the show is, because John Hyde was just telling me. So this is an existing show that belonged to Bob Costas that right. Joe Buck has now taken over. So he said, John says it's like sports person, sports person in like a town hall uh -huh. sort of setting, and it always ends with comedians. 
So the oh. format is pretty much the format that it's been. Right. Mm-hmm. All right, Marianne from Brooklyn, go ahead. Oh, that show is a sports show. It's not for someone like Audie, that kind of raunchy comedian, to come in and blow it for everybody. I think everybody was very uncomfortable. Everybody wrote to me about it on Facebook. <laughs> and I think that same <laughs> shit Audie does in your show belongs there and doesn't belong in every other show. And the fact that Audie is throwing somebody, you know, out there saying, oh, he hugged me, he this. What kind of loyalty do you have to anybody? And Fred, you're also very wishy-washy, kissing all these no, I'm very not wishy-washy. I'm very clear. I'm I'm going against what you say and what a lot of people say. Fred is honest. I'm being honest, Marianne. You're saying it's good, and then you're saying, oh, it's not. No, I didn't say that. When did I say that? Step up to the plate and kick all in his because it's Why did Fred happen to like it? He liked it. I did like it. He liked it. He hates it. No, I didn't say I hated it. I Mar- said I liked it. Marianne, you're I'm a moron. Very clear. You're a moron. I think you're on Marianne. Facebook too much. He doesn't belong. No, Marianne, you're a stupid person. That's the problem. I think the radiation from your computer screen is frying your brain. No, you're you're a dumb idiot, and we love you, but and we have you on because you're annoying. Right. But you're a moron. Audie, I cannot wait till you fucking jump off the bridge. Okay, great, great. That's right. I'm gonna outlive you. your pussy, your gay thing, homo bullshit. That's what you're good for, Artie. Okay. Wow. You're an asshole. That's what you could say. Nigga, fuck. That's all I say. That's all I say. That's all I say. All right, Marianne, not a fan of the appearance. See, that was not a good Marianne appearance. That was not one of her better She doesn't appearance. like me, Howard. She's mad at me. I don't agree better. with that. I think she likes you. No, she, she, no, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. I don't like you anymore, Artie. <laughs> <laughs> you were right. She doesn't like you. I never liked you. I misread the situation. I never liked you. Although she's a flip-flopper. He treats people like shit. He's very, very nasty. And you're nice. True friend. I don't come to your book signing to hang on. I came there to support you, and I wrote your letters. I don't like you no more, and I'll say the truth, and I'll never like you till the day I die, Artie. Well, I hope that's tomorrow, and wait, Mary, and please say it ain't so. You're not going to write me anymore? No, I'm not. Oh, my uh, God. How I will I get I through the day? I don't You've believe You've voiced that. your opinion once again. I Thank you. I love you, Howie, and I'll be blue, true, true blue to you. Get rid of that f***ing will you please? Stop talking about Benji. You, Artie, you. Go somewhere and lose it, because you'll never have a career without Howard, ever. You're an idiot. Ever. You'll <laughs> All right, thank you, Marianne. Uh, Marianne voicing her. I love you. Screw him, Howard. Well, yeah, did thank you. you. my picture I sent you? I certainly did. You like it? Uh, you did actually like it. Marianne oh, took... Marion took a picture of me outside the Letterman show. Wow. And uh, you should wow. see how handsome I look. Yeah, wow. Good for uh, you, Marianne. Can you say one thing calmly? The thing about people putting on your show is enjoyment. We don't want to be brought down by negativity and endless stupid humor and heroin jokes. We're sick of it. Well, well thanks for the positive call. I'm speaking for 99% of the Howard population. I'm sure you are. That's why 4,000 people uh, go to my shows and se- it sells out in two seconds. All right, Marianne, thank you. Well, listen, this is a highly wow. thank you. You like the picture. All right, thank he you. He doesn't like it. it. Look up sarcasm in your dictionary if you have Look one, you idiot. Stick your head up your ass. Yeah. All right, Marianne from Brooklyn. Wow. Now, this is a very controversial opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I feel like you have to fart, man. That was very (laughs) controversial. You did it again, Artie. Well, this is. I think we're going to hear more about this. Give me your opinion. I thought you were very funny. Thank you. I thought it was in- entertaining and interesting. Thank you. That's what I, I want. I know why Joe Buck might have a problem with it, because Joe Buck brought you out to ostensibly talk sports yeah, but and he fit did, into that's that, not that what thing. I, was, I, pitched, I pitched stuff to a segment yeah, producer. But I it. enjoyed the segment. All right. So, you know, for what for what it's worth, um, Again, I don't know. Like what, I said, when Gilbert blew himself up on national television, I enjoyed every I enjoyed moment. every minute of it. So yeah, and, that's my. Vote. And, and, and Howard, did and you hear contrary me? to what uh, Marianne says, uh, so that I don't want to appear wishy-washy, I thought it was an A plus on his opinion. Right, Thank you. And you Howard, know. did you hear like Ralph said any moans in the? <laughs> I I heard maybe a. It was cheering and laughing. No, was, I think people were very caught up in it. If I could kill that hard every night, I'd be f-ing Chris Rock for Christ's sake. Uh, Artie. We have not heard the end of this. I think we're going to hear something from the Joe Buck camp. And that's fine with me. Really? And let's keep it going. And that's fine with me. Let's see what's happening. Let's see what Joe Buck and Russ Greenberg's camp want to say. That's right. Camp is in session. Come at me, motherfucker. All right. I play for Babe Ruth. There you go. Now, Artie. 
Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now, Artie, the only time these guys are going to be... When do you sleep, by the way? I'm, that's what I'm curious about. He's this everywhere. show is... Uh, yeah, yeah. What is going on? Because I can't figure it out. You're up at 9 o'clock doing well, that show. Listen, I'm promoting a book show. now, which they were kind enough not to mention. Right. And yeah, um, By the way, what about that? They didn't mention the book, so... That was good. Uh, my publicist yeah, yeah. is doing a great job. Yeah. And, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Artie, you're supposed to do a bunch of uh, anti-gay jokes. No book mention. Right. Uh, so that'll help. And I'm not anti-gay, by the way. Way. It's so stupid. I, I'm a giant fan. I'm being a real person. At Giant Games, Tony Romo, they say, I'm making a joke. Michael Irvin laughed. What, what time are joke. you going to be? I, I notice you're very awake for the show, and that's good, and I like that. Yeah, I'm not, on blow, you're not. You're I'm not on blow, Howard. You're not. I'm not on blow, man. All right, all right. Not on Ritalin, anything like I'm that? I'm not on Ritalin. Because you are, you are a if massive ball the, of energy. The thing that you're like on, Robin, I'm on green drink. Yes. Green drink. <laughs> to shut the go. I think it's the the shit they put in that vending machine. I'm just happy. I said this on the Super right. Fan rant round table, and I might have said this to you on the phone. And yes. here's the analogy. I'm so happy to be off heroin. Like, I never thought I could get off it. Right. And it's like I'm awake again. U2 has a song named, I, th I think it's Bad. And it's I think it's about heroin. And the end is like, I'm wide awake. And I love it. And you know how in Frosty the Snowman... When when he melts, yes, he comes back up. They put the hat on him, Go ahead. and he's awake again. And he goes, "Happy birthday!" That's what I you feel are like. frosty this time. I'm, I'm like, "Happy birthday, guys!" I'm back at the party. Does everybody want to talk loud and be fun? And and that's the. I problem. remember the song "Frosty the yeah, Snowman." Right, right. Was on heroin. Yeah, no, okay. One day, well, right, everyone's here for white. bang.